Good morning, morning, Your Majesty. Majesty. Oh, get a gun. Shoot that bloody piper with you. <laughs> right away, sir. Your juice, Mrs. Hill? Thank you, Neil. Major Tim Stone's body was flown back home today. Stone, a GP by profession, had been called into active service as a member of the Territorial Army. He died while... Serving... Your mobile phones for today, sir. Pay as you go. The blue one is for Mrs. Song. Hill. Ah, you're a star. I'll be ready to leave in 15, Neil. Early start this morning. My boss is having a meeting at the palace. <laughs> Indeed, ma'am. I think we love your weekly meeting with the PM. Hmm? His wife, Mary, and I think this woman wrote to me. Yeah, about defence cuts. God, when you actually see it, the coffin, the kids. What? It's not your problem, Rich. Who says? <laughs> your subjects say. Mm. It's not your problem, it's my boss's problem. Oh, she asked for my help. And? And? And, I don't know. Exactly, you don't know. <laughs> So don't tax that tiny little inbred brain of yours. <laughs> Just be a good king and lie back. Mm. Mm. And forget about politics. <laughs> <laughs> It's not too late, sir. We can still go back. Just drive, Ray. Go next door, yeah? And uh, Rob's still out of it, yeah? Still on the floor. <laughs> that guy's insane. Except we can't tell why he looks so odd. And then we get it. Jimmy P shaved his bloody eyebrows off. No way. Both of them. I mean, he looks like something out of Star Trek. And then this is the classic, yeah? Turns out it's his passing out parade Saturday and he's got to have eyebrow <laughs> wigs made. <laughs> I'm serious. Eyebrow wigs. Oh, Your Majesty. Oh, Rich, I wish you'd been there. You would have pissed yourself, I swear. That's awesome. I have your poster. Thanks, Abigail. Look, I've got to do this. I'm gone. Uh, what have you got today? Uh, pissed lunch with sexy birds, spurious visit to Silverstone, then back to London for clubbing till three. Do you ever do any work? I'm a playboy prince. That is work, you? 
Oh, you know, the usual, waving and smiling, waving and smiling. Laters. Yeah. The only people who know who the woman is are his valet and his PPO. Neither are going to betray that confidence to us. No, you're right, of course. Abigail might pick up on stuff, but, I mean, why would you tell me she's not stupid? No, she's great, isn't she? Ma'am? She's great. I've seen you two laughing and joking. You make a wonderful couple. <laughs> Ma'am, are you suggesting... It? Do you want me to get Abigail into bed? Did I say that? I didn't say that. You do find her attractive, though, Major Brooks. Well, yes. Yes. Personally, I detest interstaff relationships. There's always a danger one might say something to a lover one shouldn't. But I suppose sometimes, sometimes, one just can't help oneself. Letter of condolence to Mrs. Stone, you asked for, sir. Uh, yeah, just stick it on there. And the PM is on his way up. Yeah, great. Can't wait. Me and Teddy cracking jokes all morning. Hilarious. <laughs> I imagine him to be a very funny man, sir. Yeah, beneath the ice cold facade, he's a comedy genius. Go on, bugger off. Buggering right off, sir. Aren't you going to do anything, sir? What's there to do? Just... It'll all blow over, Ray. I promise you, just trust me on this one. My leaving do, sir. I'm afraid I wouldn't be happy going ahead with it under the circumstances. What? I'm sorry, sir. Oh, come on, John. You're the palace press secretary. You must have some idea who she is. Miranda, if you knew how much he puts it about, you'd know why I'm not interested. It'll be on the next one tomorrow. All right. No, it's just I kind of got the sense that this one was a bit more serious. Well, I'm sure she thinks she is, and they all do. <laughs> You're going to love this. There was this one birdie. Your Majesty, the Prime Minister. Prime Minister. Your Majesty. Do come on through, have a seat. All right, all right, Ray. Stop going on. Peter, um, I mean superintendent. Have you got five, please? Of course, sir. Uh, so, uh, the point of these meetings, obviously, is for me to, uh... Well, <laughs> I'm meant to listen, advise and counsel. Well, I find them... invaluable. Well, I received a letter from the widow of a... of an officer, uh, Major Tim Stone, who died in active service. And, basically... Well, he died. Well, he died in agony because he'd given the last of his morphine to another officer. It took him ten hours to die with no pain relief. Anyway, I was just wondering, in my role, advice and counsel and uh, all that, I wondered if we could just have a quick chat about the defence cuts. Yes. Well, that's, that's pretty complicated, of course. Um, uh, let me try and explain. Of course, after the Baroness was the dot-com girl, whose dad set up, um... Oh, what's it? Anyway, she was at least 20 stone, and I heard him tell George that apparently she was like a bouncy castle. <laughs> I think I might have killed someone. I mean, I absolutely wasn't pissed or anything. And I know, maybe I, I, I took the bend um, a bit too quickly, and as I straightened up, well, there was something by the side of the road. 
and, um, well, I hit it. I mean, not full on or anything. I, I, I just um, uh, clipped it a bit, but I, I, I definitely hit something. Something? The thing is, Pete, it, it was dark. It was raining. It, uh, it was really difficult okay, to see. Hang on, hang on. What did you find, sir, when you got out and looked? What did you find? Um, you see, um, Ray was convinced that it, it was a deer. I mean, I wanted to, to get out. I, 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 I wanted to get out and look, but, but Ray said that there was really no need. But oh. now... OK, sir, I'm going to see what I can find out. See if I can confirm what you may or may not have hit last night. Until I do, you will talk to no one about this. Not your sisters, not Queen Charlotte, and most certainly not the King. Is that clear? Sir? It's Crystal. Good. So, one can't really call them defence cuts, because the RAMC have actually benefited by an increased funding of, of, of over 3% as a direct result of our reallocations. Right. But, as I say, it's all in the white paper report. And uh, I know it's only a thousand pages or so, but you do still get a sense of the detail of what we're trying to do. So read that. And then uh, next week, maybe we could have a proper discussion? Yeah, I'm sure the detail is very important, of course. It's just a man died, Teddy, a good man, because he gave another man the last of his medical supplies. And I suppose that's the human cost. Isn't it? Indeed, Sam. So. so, you looking forward to the Raw Variety Show next Thursday? Well, he's got balls, I'll give him that. But I think he got the message. Did he have anything interesting to say? Ish. <laughs> okay, next up is... This is stone on every His story now I want to hear yours. Odd. Very. Dig. Ma'am? I'll be honest with you, boss. I had my eyes closed. I wasn't asleep. So I heard it, but I didn't see it. He pulled up, I looked at him. Asked him what it was. It was as white as a sheet. It was babbling, not making much sense. So I went to open the door, and he just lost it. Started screaming at me to stay put. And for a second, I'll admit it, I did hesitate. Then he just suddenly put his foot down. I was shouting at him to stop, but he wouldn't, Pete. He just wouldn't. I was short of grabbing the wheel, and then we were five miles down the road, then ten. Then he asked me to drive. I'll need your exact route. You told anyone about this? No one. Keep it that way. Coming, sir. Neil. I want this hand delivered, please. 
So me and Vinny are on the lookout for anything we can find. Oh, man, that is gross. It's genius. So what have you got so far? Some of Isabel's hair, a plaster with George's blood on it, and some used cotton buds of Eleanor. Uh, and do you seriously think people will offer you money for them? People are weird. In the Middle Ages, people used to think a touch of the monarch's hand could cure scrofula. Uh, yeah, that would be because they were very, very stupid. Well, you think we're only smarter now? We still have our little gods. I don't. But well, there are plenty that do. They still stand out there, waiting to shake little Dickie's hand, touch the hem of his garment. They want a bit of the magic to rub off. So to have their own little bit of them, all five of them. Well, it gold just babes. You're vile, the pair of you. You seen your rosy yet? Yeah. I got Queen Charlotte tomorrow. Ah, yeah! <laughs> Simon, don't get tricky. If you guys don't want to do it, then we'll do it on our own. Ellen has done the service of remembrance for the last five years. Yeah, that was then, this is now. Seriously, if the King talks to the Blind Soprano, then Eleanor has to do the Jury Colonel. Oh, but he has such bad breath. Spit for me, talk. Fine. Then... OK, OK, fine. 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 God, I love a dominant woman. I have never been so insulted in all my life. So does he, by all accounts. The King. She was on top, so I heard. Our uh, mystery woman. So crap, Simon. You love it. All right, Ray. Hello, happy guy. Just a few more days to go, and then you're a free man. Lines every day, golf whenever you want, you lucky beggar. Yes, aren't I? See ya. Bye. in there. What do you look like? How is Mr. Dobbs? Are your relatives? Um, DCI Pete Bayfield. Is he going to be okay? Mm, I don't know. Maybe. Has he said anything? He mentioned something about uh, number plate. Officer, Amanda Dobbs, his granddaughter. Just wondered if you'd made any progress. Um, no, nothing as yet. Broken pelvis, three fractured ribs. Wouldn't treat a dog like that, would you? No. No, it's, it's pretty despicable. Can I get your number? Someone to talk to. Mum's going spare. Uh, just ring the main switchboard, they'll put you through. We need information. I'm sorry. <sighs> Newton Green Police Station, please. No, just put me straight through. I've got it. I see. Monarch's toenail. Right. Hang on. <laughs> Richard's toenail. Isabel's hair. Eleanor's earwax. George's blood. Four down, one to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
How likely is it that Mr. Dobbs will be able to identify the car? It's a distinctive plate. The one the King bought him for his 21st. G210487. Oh, great. What else? Um, the granddaughter, Amanda Dobbs, she overheard me tell the nurse my name. Well, she must have Googled me or something because she rang the palace switchboard. Oh, no, 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 no. Wanted to know what the King's PPO was doing, asking questions about her grandfather. Right. Peter, stick with the victim. Anything changes, the local police situation develops, let me know ASAP. I'm assuming that Ray is still on site? Absolutely. We need to come up with something to explain your presence at the hospital, something innocuous to put her off the scent. Abby? Um, yeah, fine, but can I just be sure we're all clear here? This is a hit and run. A man could die and... Well, we're happy to cover that up. Consider the alternative. We don't have a choice. <laughs> so sure, just completely takes the piss out of it. Pian's an ass. Patronising, condescending. He's a politician, that's part of the job description. Maybe. Or maybe he suspects the king has a point. The king? What happened to Tricky Dicky? Enough about Dicky. I've just come from a crisis meeting about George. Oh. Another great chapter for our book. King Richard attacks PM. <laughs> well, I had no idea Mary Stone had friends at the paper. As far as I was concerned, it was a private communication. May I ask why you decided to change the letter of condolence? Sir? I just, uh, I thought she deserved more than the bog standard response. No offence, Abigail. You say you've insulted the Prime Minister. Oh, that's your opinion. <laughs> it's the front page. It's. Excuse me one second. Hiya. Hey. Just a quick heads up. I'd back off this Mary Stone business if I were you. Oh, great. Thanks for the advice. Yeah, Teddy's pretty Be mad about it. And I don't need to tell you, this is not territory you should be in. Do you think I have a point, though? So what, you the king? Out of interest, though. Look, I've got to go. I've got a meeting with the Prime Minister, the man I work for. I'll call you later. Miranda. Right, sorry. Sorry, carry on. Sir, I'm sure it wasn't your intention to insult the PM, but the way they've spun it, you're attacking his defence cuts and suggesting that he's not taking the problems they're causing seriously. Well, I've stated facts. Sir... Mary Stone has lost her husband. Her kids have lost a father. Now, she needed my support, and I've given it. I understand that, sir, and that's very admirable. Please, don't patronise me. But what we're going to do now is to call the PM and explain how this was just a one-off and reassure him that we have no intention of interfering. Interfering? In politics. Ever again, sir. No. Sh shall I tell you what we're going to do now? We're going to invite her in. Invite who in? Mary Stone. Get her over. For tea. Sir, that will be seen as extremely provocative. I'm off for a swim. I'm sensing that the more we tell him not to... It's still standing, then. Welcome back, Your Majesty. How was Sandringham? Lovely, thank you. Tell me, Kulvinda, how are they all? Still talking to one another? Just about, ma'am. Hello, Jeremy. Good break? In Norfolk, please. Pleased to be back, then. God, I need a stiff one, or at the very least, a drink. That drive has done me in. Cases? Total idiot here. This 
whole business, to be honest. An idiot, a liability, a pain in the backside. Uh, not that honest. If I were you, I think I might be behaving in exactly the same way. Thanks. Mrs. Stone, how nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming. Do go on through. I hope you didn't have too long a journey. Uh, please do sit down. I really was so tired. I can't thank you for writing. His Majesty expressed his condolences. He is very kind. He is a great listener. That's not so bad. He also is very concerned about the level of government funding. Oh, no. He believes our troops should be treated with the same yes. level of loyalty and respect the Prime Minister. as we demand from them. Yes. Well, pop over. We'd love to see you. And stability. We're delighted His Majesty is taking an interest in these matters, but there's now a danger that he's abusing his constitutional powers. I can assure you His Majesty. And if that happens, if things start to get out of shape, then, well, then it all ends up very messy. He really does need to keep quiet now, Ian. For the sake of the nation. For the sake of the nation. Hmm. I see. All right, bottom line, Ian, can you shut him up? Mrs. Hill, His Majesty, the King does not shut up. Okay. Well, I won't be quiet. I won't shut up. So I'm not going to just roll over. In fact, she's invited me to her husband's old barracks next month, and I'm seriously thinking of going. That's a really bad idea, sir. Oh, is it? They would see that as you deliberately picking a fight, sir. Well, fine, let them. What are they going to do? Do we really want to go down that route, sir? Open confrontation. I have a chance to yes, change stuff here. Please I... let me finish. To genuinely make a difference instead of just waving and smiling, waving and smiling. We could all change stuff. Well, he obviously knows he can't do this. So what the hell has got into him? Neil! This Mary Stone business, why is he doing it? Why is he taking it so far? What's winding him up? You don't want to know. I need to know. For his sake, he could get himself into a lot of trouble. I do this once, then we quits. Deal. The girlfriend. Oh, he's still saying that? Yeah. And what? She's encouraging him to do this? <laughs> no. The opposite, I think. I'm lost. The girlfriend. It's Miranda Hill. <laughs> no. Yeah. Miranda Hill. Miranda Hill. Miranda Hill. Oh, Jesus. What the bloody hell did you tell me that for? That's Mummy's. You are? It's her favourite. Use another. Nice area, Shane. Great ball, Warney. Nice ball. <gasps> nice area. Good bowling. Mmm. Getting a bit rusty there, mate. Leg works all over the place. Yeah, out of practice. When was the last time I played? <sighs> Roddy's 21st? No, was it? When else? God, that's over a year ago. Yep. Hey, remember, what's the name of that girl at Roddy's? Ooh. Gertie. Yeah. <laughs> Flirty Gertie. <laughs> yeah, she snogged like a gut. <laughs> <laughs> Just sort of clamped her mouth on it and stayed there. <laughs> Didn't one of your PPOs have to remove her? Yeah, no, it took three of them in the end. <laughs> <laughs> How is old Roddy? He there the other night? Yeah, he's good. Yeah, we should meet up. Huh. What? Nothing. What? I just... I don't know why you even bother saying it. Saying what? That we should meet up. I mean, you always say it and it never happens, so, you know, just don't even bother saying well, it. Well, things are busy, mate. Yeah, I know. I know. Sorry, I'm... I'm knackered. Heavy day. Yeah, tell me about it. Yeah, fair enough. Mr. 
this and I'm going to crash. All right. But, uh, that was a laugh. We should do it again sometime. We will. Night. Night, George. George. Are you okay? Are we, you know, okay? Never better, bro. Never better. Night. Yeah. Even on informal visits, Miss Dobbs, our personal protection officers will still do a security sweep. And for obvious reasons, we don't publicise the fact, but also because it would spoil the surprise for the patients. Um, but listen, thank you so much for your call. And if the visit does go ahead, maybe you and your grandfather would like to meet the king. Yeah, well, well, it's not confirmed yet. And as I say, if it does go ahead, you'll be the first person I call. OK. Bye now. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Mmm. Tough day. Mm. You don't want to know. Oh, come on, spill the beans. Maybe I can help. Yeah, really. So, listen, have you heard about George? George? No, what's up? Apparently him and Ray have had some kind of ruck. Major tantrums all around. First he's leaving dues on, and then it's off. And it's on again. Ray's been a real dick, by all accounts. Which is a shame, because he's asked me to be one of his references and, um... Simon, Ray is a saint, trust me. What? To put up with George? You know, just once... Just once, it would be nice to think you were here because you enjoyed my company. What? I'll see you around. Abby, come on. Abby, what are you talking about? Abby! Raise the wrong party. Raise our way in. So I was in there way too long and Jeremy was looking over at me, but then I realised I already had it. What? The Queen's lips. <sighs> Vinny, you are... Genius. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm watching you, Kulvinda. Naughty boy. I wouldn't trust you as far as I could throw you. Oh, please. The only thing she's ever thrown is a hissy fit. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say something? Hmm? Nada, Jeremy. Nada. Oh, stop it. It's only me. Oh, God, I love this one. This is the, this is the sequel, isn't it? <laughs> Classic. Um, Ray, could I borrow you for ten seconds? Thank you. Mm. Ray, I wanted to say goodbye, really. Oh, man. <laughs> it's nothing fancy. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, open it. Go on. To Ray, a true friend with love, Ellen. Hmm. Very important to me that you realise how much we appreciate the years of service you've given us. I do, Mum. Good. And because I keep my ear to the ground, I hear things. I would hate for there to be any unfinished business for you here, Ray. So what I'm saying is, is that I am here, if you need me, to, to, just to talk to, really. Where is Mr. Hill tonight? Another conference. This time it's Brussels. So apparently you asked Ian if he could make me shut up. Yeah, technically that was Teddy's line. I just said it. So you listened to him then? 
While he pays my salary? Yeah, me you're just sleeping with. Oh, grow up. This is me growing up. This is me caring about the army, about, about people. Look, we all care, Rich. Okay, we all care. Yeah. So I suppose the shag's out of the question. <laughs> well, I think we can safely say that George has screwed up. George. So now we're patient. We wait until the king is most vulnerable. And only then do you tell him about the accident. He'll be needing my support. Well, you encourage him to do the only sensible thing he can. Cover this up for the sake of the monarchy. Oh, I love this. It's like one of your military operations. <laughs> and when he's done that, when he's got his hands dirty, when we've got them both, that's when we leak how naughty those brothers have been. Who knows? Mm. With a fair wind and a bit of luck. Jeezy, what's it? Trouble in Parliament today for King Richard following the publication of a set of photographs taken whilst at Sandhurst. Terry Cheadle, MP for Saltingham West, suggests that King Richard showed a greater contempt for the military with his disrespectful behaviour. Well, that was taken a year before I joined Sandhurst. Yes, sir. You are aware that this will have come from Downing Street, sir. Well, this came from his office? Yes, sir. From his press office? Yeah. Miranda. Or one of her team. They would have sourced the photo, leaked it. Smart move, given the position they found themselves in. The MP, that thing he said about me not caring about the army. They'd have briefed him to say that. This would die very quickly if I called Downing Street and let them know we won't be making any more statements. <sighs> Sir? Yeah, do whatever you can. Yes, sir. It's from Buckingham. It's time. Hi, it's Miranda. Sorry, I can't take your call. Please leave a message. Nice work. Really. We all care, Rich. We all care. Yeah, right. You sleep well tonight, Miranda. Hey. Oh. If it's any consolation, I think people know the press are bastards. They won't believe a word of it. Really? Yeah. They know you're doing your best. Thanks. Rich. Yeah? I'm aware you need more hassle right now, like you need a hole in the head. But there's something you should know. About George. Hi. Hey. Listen, Abby, I just wanted to say... Um, what? All that I'm sorry about yesterday. Oh, don't worry about it. You were just doing your job. Wheedling, conniving, cajoling, it's just business. Hang on, hang on, hang on, no. It's more than that. Abby... I like you. Do you? Yes, I do. I mean, I really, really... What the hell do you think you're doing? No, I said, what do you think you are doing? Uh, nothing, I'm sorry if I got it wrong. Yeah, you did get it wrong, mate, very. How, how dare you assault me? Assa assault you? I mean, I, 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 I... Hmm. Hmm. There. See? How do you like it? A lot. 
A lot. And I would so be interested in a swap. I've got a huge collection of Madonna memorabilia. Boring. I love your royal collection. Fancy swapping them for signed pics of Rudolf Noriev and Margaret Fontaine. Who? <laughs> um, Sinatra. No. England World Cup team. No. Hi, freaks. How about swapping with me? I've got a large collection of Manic Street Preacher memorabilia. And I could do you two cigarette butts authenticated as having been taken from the car of Richie Edwards. What, the Richie Edwards? From the car of Richie Edwards that was left at the Seven Bridge car park prior to his suicide. His actual butts? The actual ones that were actually in his mouth? And all they want are some old toe clippings. Oh, my God. What a bunch of losers. What the hell have you done? Miranda. I know you know John T. Neil rang me, so. What did you want? Can you get me in to see him? No. And you're taking a real risk by coming here unannounced. My advice, go home. I need to speak to him. Well, I don't imagine he's too keen to speak to you. I was just doing my job. Right. Oh, come on, John T. Miranda, what is this to you? I mean, Jesus. I'm not sure that Messi does it. Go home to your husband, do yourself a favor, and forget about the king. I mean, we had a beer, for Christ's sakes. We had a beer, and I actually asked you if everything was OK. Oh, yeah, Rich, no, never better, mate, never better. And you told Pete Bayfield. You can tell Pete Bayfield and not me. How the hell does that work? Bloody hell, Rich, what are you more pissed off about? What I did or that I didn't tell you? What you did, of course. For which I'm truly sorry. What I did was stupid and... crap. And I panicked. And I don't know what to do about it. And yes, I should have told you, but I just felt, I don't know. I just felt I couldn't. Why couldn't you? What do you mean you couldn't? You're my brother. And you're the king? Things have changed, Rich. You like it or not, they've changed. Well, they haven't changed that much. Haven't they? So who decides what happens now? Who decides what happens to me? That's why I didn't tell you. Because I didn't want to put you in that position. I don't see why it's such a big deal. <laughs> well, it was an accident. George hasn't killed anyone. Not yet. Well, you would never do anything to hurt him, would you? So George can stop worrying. Rich will protect you, won't you? <laughs> <laughs>